the second sheet remains exactly the same, the motor. And uh, gate drive logic remains exactly the same. And, uh, and then we are going to, and the other two sheets also remain the same. So in the simulation profile, all right, so let's see, this is demo three. <coughs> Here, delay one is set to zero, so we can run uh, at a delay one of zero. <coughs> delay one is set to zero. <coughs> so let's see if it runs before we do parameter analysis. If you look at, <coughs> let me just look at uh, IL1, IL2, IL3, three primes. So you can see that for, for some reason, uh, you don't have that uh, swing here anymore. But you do have the currents have got some interesting twist to it. Uh, and if you look at output power, That is uh, so that's the input power sim uh, and then we can actually do an FFT on it and take it to 100 kilohertz. So here, have a 20 kilohertz component, which is quite significant, almost 63 watts. And then if you look at your DC power, which is uh, About 47.654 watts. Okay, so and you also have a nasty 40 kilohertz. So it, it really affects your capacity, input filter capacity part. The average power will be very low if you average uh, these components out. Uh, let's see. Uh, so now what we're going to do, uh, so I think the interesting part is that these waveforms, even in the delay of zero, they look pretty clean, except for uh, some wiggle on the top. So
So advantage of low side PWM is it has somehow eliminated the nasty ringing on the on the current. Now <clears throat> if we do the output power We don't have to type these. Sometimes it's faster than searching for the variables if you have not set your markers. So that's your output file. And if you do FFT on this one, You have a very tiny 20 kilohertz ripple. And then you don't really have any other. It's about 4 watts of 20 kilohertz, so I don't think you'll feel that in actual uh, operation. Uh, and then you have 40 watts. And then these are really milliwatt signatures at the end. Um, And then let me just run analysis for delay one of 750 micro. So what we'll do is I'm going to go to, instead of doing a parametric analysis so that we can, we can save some time here, I'm going to set uh, delay one here to seven. I guess we, what we suspect is the current will become flat. We have some wiggle on the top for the current. There is a little bit of reduction, 50 watts, a little bit of reduction from where the delay was zero on this side. And then um, we'll do an output power.
for power. And if you don't have to be on it. Output power has gone up slightly, and then this this couple I guess is about the same. The twenty kilohertz ripple is. That's the high side and low side. So both side PW high and low side seems to improve the circuit performance slightly uh, in terms of uh, harmonics and uh, efficiency. And uh, now we have all channel PWM. Now all channel PWM becomes uh, uh, it's, it's expensive to implement all channel PWM, but it also gives you the most amount of flexibility over the performance of your motor. And, uh, and it also requires uh, three different PWM channels. So your uh, processor requirements uh, go, go up. You require now a processor with, with uh, more channels. and. Uh, and so let's talk about uh, problems with the basic control. So what we have seen so far, where you have a high side PWM or high or low side PWM driven by just a logic, uh, you, you have uh, these issues. Uh, normally you have uh, also issues related with the motor, which we can't overcome with those uh, schemes. One is cogging, magnet interaction with stator T. Uh, Normally when you are building a motor, when you are designing a motor, you can skew your magnets to a certain angle to overcome cogging, right? And uh, cogging is a significant, significant uh, issue when you're designing a bicycle and you have a motor inside the, the rear wheel where when you're paddling, you feel the cogging, right? So that, that's one of the detrimental effects of, uh, uh, of uh, having a motor with a lot of cogging. Um, so, and the other option is skewing also becomes expensive in manufacturing because you have to, uh, first of all, design the magnets with an angle and then you have to install it correctly uh, inside the motor. Uh, so it, it becomes a little bit expensive. And then the other way you can reduce cogging is by picking a right component combination of rotor and stator poles. That also affects your manufacturability but uh, that's one other way you can reduce cogging inside the motor. The reluctance torque is there when you have magnet length, which is less than 180 degrees. And then um, you have the mutual ripple torque, which is because of the manufacturing imperfections of magnets, back EMFs, and other fact factors such as inverter saturation. Okay, so those, those are some of the problems. With, some of them you could mitigate using a uh, higher level of control. Um, and uh, so I'm going to briefly talk about that kind of control. And let's see. So here is a block diagram, which is a little bit advanced control than what we have seen. You, know, you have uh, uh, on the So on the left hand side you have speed reference and you can have a speed control. This could be a PI which generates a current reference and then you could have another PI. Let's see. I guess there's no, there's no current feedback. There is a position feedback here. So you are, you are generating uh, you're having a current feedback here with IA, PI, BI, C. Okay. So you have, you, you take current reference and then generate three separate references, IA, IB, IC, and then from three separate references, you generate three voltages, A, B, C, to, to, to drive your motor. 
All right, so you have speed reference, which goes into generating your current reference, single current reference. So if you're using, uh, if you're doing still trapezoidal uh, control, then single reference is sufficient. From single reference, you can generate three separate references, IA, IB, IC, because the only part you're interested in is controlling the magnitude of the current. And then you have a current regulator which converts these 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 three, let's see here. This is the duty cycle command, I would say. So these three duty cycle commands generate three voltages. So this is your inverter. And you have three duty cycle commands. So you are closing the loop. So you, you, you're uh, having the feedback, you have a PI here, you generate three duty cycle commands, which we will see, and then uh, generate uh, three voltages to drive your motor. And then you're sensing theta, <coughs> and you're sensing speed. So basically that's d by dt. So theta is your false sense of feedback, right? So this is, so what is this electronic community? Well, it's, it's really nothing except that what you're doing is you're taking, it's an old terminal, probably uh, wrong. Uh, so you have one single IA, command, I, a single reference coming, let's say two amps, right? So what you're doing with, two, with that is you are able to generate uh, with this two amps uh, three signals, which basically say, okay, they look like this, shifted by 120 degrees. So this becomes IA, IB. Okay, and IC. So that's that's exactly that, that's the only thing it does. Because all you're interested in is controlling this magnitude. And that magnitude is decided by this input. Because without theta, you will not be able to time it. Theta is the only way you can you can time it. This pulse width is going to vary with time. Is that right? No, I think it's actually omega t plus theta. That theta is actually omega t plus theta. If you try to write the fundamental of this, it will become phi, phi a into sin of omega t plus theta. But theta you are trying to provide is from object. Uh, that's what a, a, Is it a rotor position? Yeah, it's a rotor position. Yes. I think that's what I mentioned. Yeah, it's a rotor position. Yeah, yeah, it's a rotor position. And uh, so you, you're saying it's, it's, it should be omega t plus theta, which is, I, don't I guess, that, that's what you're, okay. Um, see, I can easily convert this into a logic. Uh, theta gives me six positions, right? So if it's a Hall sensor, I basically have, uh, Six positions. So if I say position one, two, three, four, five, six, all I'm doing is I know based on theta what is my IA, IB, IC. Does that make sense to you? So 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 when I have Hall sensor signals coming in, I still can say okay, uh, AT, BT, CT. I can map theta against that position and issue a reference IA, IB, IC, and, and all I'm doing is imposing this magnitude on that reference. So that, that's, that's what really we're doing in that block. Now, one way to improve uh, is Combine a faster outer speed loop 
with a more sophisticated inner current loop. So you can play with, so this one here you have actually PI inside here. So this you can focus on making it fast. And then uh, and you can definitely improve on the inner current loop. So, and let's see here. I, I want to make one more point here is, okay, in this con particular control, uh, we have seen uh, this happens, right? Your torque actually has a ripple. And that ripple happens because of the transitions, right? And, and this ripple becomes worse if these transitions are unequal in uh, unequal times. Right? And that, that, of course, depends on uh, variability of inductance values plus your uh, switching times. So, so here is uh, one way. Now, in this particular approach, in this particular design, uh, the assumption, underlying assumption is that the back EMF voltages are not trapezoidal. Back EMF voltages are rectangular, right? So, and the currents here are trapezoidal. So you're designing a motor with square back EMF voltages. So the, the magnet length is quite short, but your current is trapezoidal, right? And then you begin to play with the slope, uh, rise and fall time, to get rid of the torque ripple and to eliminate uh, and, and to improve uh, efficiency and, and smoothness of the, of the motor.